Okay, up to now we discussed about Hadoop features like in Hadoop you have two separate layers one is HDFS second one is MapReduce which is for the processing of course in the latest one you have Spark kind of execution models even so later we will discuss about this uh, Spark and uh, DAC kind of models okay in HDFS what we have discussed up to now is two important highlighted features one is unlimited data storage second one is supporting parallel process so for this comparatively we discussed with other database systems why those systems are not supporting unlimited, why Hadoop is supporting, why some of the RDBMS databases, even though they are clusters, why parallelism is not possible. The reason is non-DFS, but in case of Hadoop, Terrorita, Netija, Vertica, and all these things, the backend file, the file system type is DFS, which distributes data into different, different slave missions in the form of blocks. Again, for the fault tolerance purpose, they are maintaining replicas. Okay. Now, before going for this MapReduce kind of discussion, what are all the different ecosystems are there in the Hadoop? So, those ecosystems, what is the purpose of each ecosystem, we will discuss now. Ecosystems in Hadoop. See the major ecosystems within this Hadoop is, so first of all what is ecosystem? It is an independent software which runs on top of HDFS and MapReduce. So what is the meaning of this statement which runs on top of how do HDFS and MapReduce is? MapReduce is a separate execution model, is a special kind of execution model. So where it is uh, the job is subdivided into two separate phases like mappers, reducers like that. So what exactly mapper and reducer will do in later discussions will come. Whenever I submit some statement in any of the ecosystem, the statement is converted into MapReduce. So finally, who is being executed is uh, MapReduce. MapReduce also will be executed into Hadoop cluster. But if I store something into ecosystem, the data storage will happen at backend HDFS. Suppose here we have a ecosystem called Hive. Hive backend storage is again HDFS. That means if I store something into Hive table, finally data will be kept into HDFS only. So you know HDFS behavior, file is divided into blocks, blocks will be distributed into different slave missions. So that parallelism will happen. But when I submit the query, here execution model is MapReduce. Okay? So that is what the meaning of this ecosystem. It is an independent software which runs on top of HDFS and MapReduce. So we have so many different ecosystems here. So the, the basic two layers here, HDFS and MapReduce, of course in the latest DAC kind of things. The ecosystems like Hive, Pig, Scoop, Flume, even nowadays some of the new ecosystems added, that is Kafka, HBase. Woozy, Zookeeper, such things, different, different things are there. The purpose of each ecosystem is different. The main purpose of this ecosystem is 
like uh, for each and everything in stuff writing this map reduce to process the data we have different ecosystems so which reduces our development cost and time okay so among them the first uh, we start our discussion from high onwards hi is a data warehouse environment in hadoop framework so where you can store data in tables so in rdbms that means in sql systems so we are storing our data into tables we are processing our data by using some select statements like sql statements like that similarly for our hdfs file hive will give you one table shape so where you can store data in tables in structured format See, but to, if it is Oracle or any Sybase kind of databases, if you take the backend, uh, the query language to process is SQL, structured query language. Like this, here there is a special query language which is called as HQL. HQL stands for Hive Query Language. Is used to process, manage, and process data. So here the data management activities like creation of tables, creation of partitions, okay, indexing, so such kind of things. That is called managing activities. Processing means your query processing. Whatever the things you want to retrieval and uh, whatever the things you want to perform aggregations, all these things you will process by using HQL statements, which is very close to SQL, which is similar to, you can say, not exactly equivalent, similar to SQL. This is what simply HQL. But what this HQL can process? HQL can process different varieties like structured data it can deal. And even XML, semi-structure like XML. Even JSON data. Nowadays most of the logs or even uh, if you bring, if you import some of the messages from the uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, such kind of things, the data will be into the, in the form of JSON only. So HQL can process these three basic varieties and also like uh, even it can process URLs also. If you, if you take web logs, most of the content is about URLs only. But within that URL, a lot of useful information is available. So all these varieties Hive can process, that means HQL statements can process. But the weakness of this Hive is, is not that much efficient, is not um, good enough for unstructured text. Okay? So of course, Hive is supporting even regular expressions also, but not flexible as big like that. Okay? So this is what simply the limitation. That's why there is another ecosystem which is big. Of course, if you observe this uh, high uh, Hadoop ecosystems, Hive, Pig, Flume, and all these things, even Hadoop, Hadoop also, if you observe the logos, so those are with some animal names. Okay? See, actu actually, the exactly ecosystem behavior, the animal logo, exactly will opt it. Uh, suppose, uh, why they put, like, uh, for such kind of systems, the animal names, suppose you take Pig, so what pig eats is pig eats everything. That means pig can process structured and structured on such meaning they put that now and that. Now. Okay. So but uh, pig is not like a database kind of activity. Is a language 
but what kind of language it is because we have seen so many different kinds of languages like structured oriented language procedural oriented languages even functional oriented functional programming languages and uh, whoops object oriented programming and all these things we have seen but pig is also a language but its variety is data flow language what kind of language means data flow language okay to design your complex data pipelines to do pig is used so pig is a data flow language in Hadoop framework. Okay. So here again something language. Pig Latin. The language scripting name is Pig Latin. Now that means you can say pig as software name within that the language component is pig latin is a script based language used to define data flows then what exactly the data flow we will discuss data flow is a collection of pipes data flow is a collection of pipes here the different name what is pipe is pipe is a data operation See again this operation can be anything like loading data and processing each tuple okay even sorting merging grouping even filtering aggregations it can be of anything the operation can be anything even advantage is advantage of this pig latin complex data flows you can make easy see to understand what exactly the data flow is I will give you one some non IT example Uh, suppose uh, treat it as uh, some I will I will take example of one water flow I treat it as a water tank the tank has water which is raw water which cannot be directly used here is some pipe I am adding so here in our data point of view pipe means an operation here what I am doing is dump of water which is pipe 1 So for this pipe, I am adding one more pipe here. So here I am adding some filter which cleans the dust. Okay, this is pipe 2. Again for this one more pipe I am adding which is pipe 3. Here the operation is some I am heating up, some geyser I am adding, I am making water heat, okay. And fourth pipe, that means fourth operation, which is pipe 4. Some here I am adding some fragments, some perfume, let's assume like this. See, totally four pipes are involved in here. Think that this is like your usage room. Here I have different tabs, like a tab one, tab two, and uh, tab three, tab four, like this. This tab four is connected with uh, 
pipe number 4. Tap 2 is connected with uh, pipe 2. Tap 1 is connected with uh, pipe 1. Tap 3 connected with pipe 3. Okay. Now try to understand if I open this tap for 1 directly what kind of water I will get directly the raw water I will get. If I, if I open tap 2 what I get so actually the water flow starting from here the first pipe 1 from pipe 1 to water will flow to pipe 2. So first in the pipe 1 the water is still in raw mode but when it entered into pipe 2 the water getting cleaned that means some unwanted things will be eliminated like dust particles will be eliminated. Now the output of tap 2 is a cleaned water and let's open the tap 3. So filter water will be entered into pipe 3 in the pipe 3 what is the operation heating up so that here I will get cleaned and hot water and in the pipe 4 so the output of this pipe 4 is it's a cleaned and heat up and hot water at the same time the fragmented water like this. Here observe totally the flow contains four pipes. The water starts journey from pipe 1 to up to pipe 4. So what is happening from one pipe to another pipe is data is transformed from one state to another state. So this is what like uh, the data flow. Of course here this example is water flow just think in a, a data point of view as easily from the file the raw data we are fetching after that some un unwanted messages we are eliminating and after that we are sorting something and after that we are performing some grouping and aggregations like this. So when data travels from one operation to another operation what is happening is data is transformed from one state to another state. So that is what like a data flow. Even complex data flows can be made very easy by using pig. Suppose if there is no pig for each and every purpose, if there is no pig, there is no hive, for each and every purpose you need to write a biggest map reduce code. One map or one reducer, again to call this map or reducer one driver class. If necessary again uh, combiner, partitioner, such kind of complex, uh, the complexity is more in writing. But pig and hive such systems are saving lot of development time and also cost. I suppose mostly like if it is a map reduce, the map reduce hello world program is word count. A simple initial word count itself like it will take like 60 to 70 lines of coding. If it is big, in just 3 to 4 lines you can make it. So on such a way, it's a pig is very easy to learn, easy to implement. Even though like the statements are very simple, the coding is very simple. But pig will do a complex functionalities the operations are very powerful okay so on such way here different ecosystems the major ecosystems once the data came into Hadoop to process it you have high and big in future classes you will get to understand when to use big when to use high such kind of clarity once we enter into those ecosystems technicals you can understand so then we will discuss okay here in the case of pig the long way is simply what kind of uh, language we are using is Pig Latin. Pig Latin is a script based language used to define data flows. Okay. See what this Pig Latin can do. Pig Latin can process. Number one structured data. And uh, unstructured text. and still semi-structured like XML, JSON, such kind of things. We have XML loaders, JSON loaders by using such kind of loaders. Even Pig Latin can work with semi-structured data like XML, JSON, such kind of things. That means the data point of view, structured data not issue, unstructured text not issue, semi-structured also not issue. All varieties it can process. But where Pig is weak is uh, suppose uh, the data is a image, the data is audio, video. At the time, by using some Java image audio video libraries or Python audio video libraries that you need to write, 
this piglet, and then not piglet. You need to write your own MapReduce or Spark kind of coding. So if it is normal like structured, unstructured text or semi-structured, then pig, can, uh, pig has no limitations to process it. If it is binary data like images, audios, videos, then other languages help, we will take it. So in this way, like majorly two ecosystems here, Hive and Pig, once data came into Hadoop to process them. Okay, but Hive, Pig, these are just ecosystems. That means some a lot of functionalities are predefined. But some functionalities may not be possible because such kind of fun functions are not, may not available here. So in any case, if you want to develop your custom functionalities, there is a concept called UDFs. UDF means user defined functions. Okay. User defined functions. See, in both uh, pig and high, not only pig, in high also you have UDF concept. In anywhere, if you need any custom functionality, you can develop that by using UDF concept. Let me write that statement in high and pig. The custom functionalities are developed by UDFs. But uh, Hive has separate UDF and Pig has separate UDF. You need to develop separately. Later you need to register them into Hive and Pig, then you can use it. You can call them. Suppose if it is Hive, the high UDFs can be done by the pins can be developed by languages like uh, Java, Python, C++, even Ruby, even R language which is a statistical programming language you know, all by using all these languages you can develop these UDFs. But if it is PIG, the PIG UDFs can be developed by same, the first four languages are common, Java, Python, C++, Ruby, at the same time even you can use JavaScript and you can use Perl. By using these languages you can develop, maybe in future with other languages also. Okay, but for each and everything no need to write UDF, most of functionalities are available. If you feel that some function which is not available here, you can call them. You can develop and you can, you can register and then you can call it. Okay, of course writing is only once. Once it is registered, you can keep calling them. Okay, any number of times that you can call it. Okay, later when we enter into this high and pig, we will see how to develop these UDFs even. This is what uh, measure two ecosystems. To process our data but these two things will be running under on top of HDFS storage and MapReduce, MapReduce. okay but once data came to Hadoop this can help you but how to bring the data into Hadoop okay because if I do some transaction the Hadoop purpose is batch, pro batch process not online process okay if I perform some transaction, the transaction will be recorded into OLTP databases like RDBMS, Oracle, DB2, such kind of things. But how to bring that data into Hadoop? There is another system called Scoop. Actually, it's not animal name here. It is derived from two words, SQL and Hadoop. From Hadoop, HAD omitted. From SQL, L omitted. SQ, OOP, like this. See, it has basically two tools. Of course, additional tools also there. The basic important two tools are, one is Scoop Import and Scoop Export. These are the two basic tools. What this import will do is to import data from RDBMS to Hadoop. Suppose I have a file which is local file. I want to copy that file into Hadoop. Directly I have HDFS command. 
by using some HDFS command, I will copy a file data into Hadoop directly. But if my data is in Oracle table, which is RDBMS, okay, at the time I need to use scoop import to import data from RDBMS to Hadoop. And scoop export, which is reverse process. Already I dragged data into Hadoop. I processed I processed by using higher figure map to do something. I got results. Suppose these results wants to be tracked by my website users. Okay, but my website cannot directly interact with this Hadoop. My website is taking input from some MySQL database or a SQL server database or Oracle. Some RDBMS is there. Now whatever the data I processed in Hadoop, these results also stored in HDFS. These results I want to export into RDBMS again at the time scoop export. That means the purpose of this one is to export data from Hadoop to RDBMS. One minute. To export data from Hadoop to RDBMS reverse engine. So simply I will give one picture for this. I have different OLTP servers which is online transaction processing where end user transactions will be recorded. Where end user transactions will be recorded. Suppose organization is maintaining multiple RDBMS, multiple OLTP servers. See why they are maintaining multiple OLTPs. That can be reason wise, that can be separately application wise like this. Suppose if all applications running under one single system, maybe load may be very high. Or else if the thing is like uh, multiple branches, if all multiple branches are running, operated at one single server level, again the load is very high. That's why they will maintain different, different OLTP servers. Okay, suppose one is like sales application, here the database is thing that Oracle. Here some inventory application, here the, the database is some SQL server. This is some other different application thing that the database is of MySQL, like this. Whatever the end user has transacted, the transaction records will be recorded into these OLTP systems. Daily what I want to do is, I want to import all this data into Hadoop. So how to import? By using scoop import to scoop import scoop import by using these tools you can import data into Hadoop once data came into Hadoop you will be doing different processing activities like data cleansing validations and a lot of data is unstructured making that unstructured data into structured okay and uh, denormalizations lot of other activities you will perform once data came into this one. Once data is processed, okay, you will get results. But these results also stored into HDFS. Suppose you have a website. Suppose the website name is info.com. Okay, you want to provide some user ID password to your users. But your, H your uh, website is not directly able to interact with this Hadoop. That's why these are taking like the input for your website is some Oracle. Then these results I want to export into this Oracle by using scoop export tool. Suppose uh, there is a reporting system which is analytical system reporting visualize for visualizations purpose suppose Tableau. So Tableau has a plugin that means a connector which can interact with directly with Hadoop so that no need to export to the, the back end of the Tableau database. So directly the Tableau is able to, Tableau or ClickView such kind of things are able to interact with Hadoop because nowadays a lot of reporting systems are having plugins with this Hadoop. Directly they can interact. But my website cannot interact, some non-Hadoop application which cannot interact with Hadoop, I want to make available of my results to the, that non-Hadoop systems. Then I am exporting. So this is what the purpose of Hadoop. Simply you can say ETL process. Okay. 
then one more ecosystem that is flu this is just to import streaming data into Hadoop. So here the word streaming data. That means one simple example for the streaming data. For example, this is a pond and this is some river. Here water. Here also water. What is the difference between these two? Here water is streaming keep flowing but here water is stagnant that means static you can say so this is just like uh, one simple one more simple example data point of view uh, suppose morning you have downloaded one movie by 6 a.m. okay download completed at the time size is uh, size was uh, 10 MB now in this moment what is the size of that file still 10 MB tomorrow also still 10 MB okay that is uh, just a static file that is not uh, streaming Suppose you fix a cam, some CC cam into your room. What that cam is doing? Keep capturing the pictures and storing the file, storing into some file. In this moment, the file size is 5 MB. After one hour, if you check it, the size will be maybe 20 MB. Of course, our class is being recorded. In this moment, the file size may be 5 MB. After, after completion, of, completion of our class, the size may be even 1 GB. Okay? That means uh, the file which keeps uh, into the file the data is keeps generating right so such kind of data is called streaming data without disturbing that source applications I want to capture the like a uh, high rate speed of uh, streams and I want to dump safely into Hadoop okay so to do that process the flume kind of uh, special systems okay the flume is a separate uh, distributed cluster similar to Hadoop so is capable of handling the biggest biggest uh, high rate speed of uh, streams and finally dump into Hadoop but in such case the scoop kind of systems are helpless scoop is only for if data is in RDBMS you can connect with this whether it is local or remote it's not a problem then you can import that but flume purpose is to capture streaming data okay from different different network sockets you can dump from different different sources at a time multiple sources you can connect from multiple sources of streams you can connect and you can import the data into Hadoop but still the flume has some drawbacks that's why there is another advanced system which is called as Kafka Kafka is a great features like streaming plus messaging that means uh, already in the market there are different different middleware tools are there like WebSphere, MQ, TIBCO, MQTT even kinesis such kind of different tools are there so how those tools are capturing the events and uh, storing them into queues and later when out the target uh, routing the messages to different target applications and that how they maintain like different brokerages the brokerage of different applications like that like flume it can stream it and like other uh, uh, messaging applications it can brokerage so such kind of advanced system when compared with the flu and also here Kafka is promising you one thing 100% message delivery guarantee in case of flu such kind of facilities are not available that's why flu cannot be used for commercial data that means if data is very sensitive you should not use flu suppose logs capturing data is not sensitive even suppose some for Twitter or Facebook I'm capturing the tweets okay even suppose I want to analyze US presidential ships I want to uh, collect uh, the tweets which are which are related with the USA, USA elections I can keep streaming by connecting with Facebook or Twitter like this but the thing is suppose today some thousand events generated even the 900 messages I collected some hundred messages missed it doesn't matter for me. in such case you can use flu but if it is some financial transaction out of 100 transactions only 90, 900 transactions are capturing some 100 financial transactions are missing means that is bad so Kafka is promising you 100% message delivery guarantee so how exactly it possible how it is uh, more effective than Flume and other, other messaging systems in the market when you enter into this Kafka we will discuss more 
okay so presently uh, for today let's uh, stop the discussion by these four ecosystems and the remaining ecosystems and map reduce execution models how it will work in tomorrow class i will explain okay just a quick review about all the ecosystems what we covered today one is high which is a data warehouse environment in our hadoop framework so in the case of high the language is hql similar to sql only what it cannot can do what it cannot do is it can do structured xml json url data processing but where high is weak means high is weak for unstructured text and second thing pig but pig in pig the language is pig latin what kind of language it, it is data flow language data flow means collection of pipes pipe means operation operation can be of anything it can be loading data processing each tuple like transformations sorting merging grouping and all these things but in hiver pig some functionalities are not possible for me to develop that functionalities to develop that custom functionalities we have the concept called udfs hi pig in both we can take help of this udfs but hi udfs can be developed by the java python c++ ruby or such languages and pig the first four languages are common addition to that javascript and and also parl okay so but what this pig can do finally the uh, pig can process structured unstructured and also semi structured like xml and json all this data you can process even there is a additional library piggy bank such kind of libraries by using such kind of libraries more effective statistical functions also you can play okay so later we discuss about this uh, more details when we enter into that ecosystem but all these things once data came into hadoop to process our data these two ecosystems are major important things but how to bring that data i have a file i have hdfs commands to bring that file data into hadoop but if i my data is in rdbms that means oracle or teradata or mysql in some other rdbms my data is there i want to import the table data or else like previously my old warehouse is in uh, rdbms now i want to migrate from rdbms to hadoop but previous historical data is available in rdbms i want to migrate entire warehouse to this hadoop that means i have i have to import it so in such case scoop is helpful scoop basically is having two tools scoop import scoop export import means importing data from rdbms to hadoop exporting means reverse engine hadoop to rdbms so generally at what situations we need to export into other systems is to make available of your hadoop results to other non hadoop applications which cannot interact with your hdfs storage so to those systems we need to export it okay simply you can observe this picture so different oltp systems we are importing finally we are processing we got results these results we are exporting into some other system but there are a lot of popular reporting tools that means uh, visualization tools are there in the market nowadays each and every visualization tool is having plugin with hadoop even nowadays latest uh, versions of etl systems like informatica pentaho talend even datastase such kind of systems are supporting are having direct plugins with hadoop okay and uh, flume if data in rdbms scoop is okay but data is streaming data is having streaming behavior the example for streaming data is your uh, live cams or web logs or database logs or charter files all these are the different examples for streaming data so how to import that one okay that is flume and kafka such kind of systems kafka is having the future called streaming plus messaging so what exactly the streaming and messaging you will get clarity in future classes okay so again when we enter into kafka by comparatively what other messaging systems will do what additionally kafka will do and all these things we will discuss and practically we will see each and every ecosystem and tomorrow we discuss about majorly hbase and the hbase is one kind of noisql database what exactly that hbase and 
Woozy, Zookeeper. These remaining systems uh, tomorrow we will discuss. And still if time favors tomorrow, okay. And we go with MapReduce overview discussion also. Okay. Thanks for attending this session. I'm going to close for today. Yeah, Madhuri Murli, Tanuja. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, for this, uh, do we have the notes, like, uh, did we record this session? Yeah, and then record already in the session, we'll record just in the notes, yeah? Okay, okay. And you go to the name, make pump this, so, no? Okay, sure. Yeah. So, in the key points, and then clear get the screenshots, you go to the notes, just, no? Screenshots, you go to the notes, save just, no? If you did, then, 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 अनोट्स चीज कोणने आदर ऑडियो वेनेंडी थे ऑडियो वीडियो रेंडू वस्से में को ओके सर सो टेक्निक